Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really fun and actually pretty big haul for you guys. These are all, except for one, blind buys. And they're all fragrances that, there's kind of a story behind of why I got interested and why I got into them. As you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I love blind buys, I love first impressions. So that is usually what my hauls are like and then I come back with second impressions later on but I will let you know the one that I have tried of the mix. So if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to subscribe. I put out videos all the time and you'll be notified every time I do and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. We have a lot of behind the scenes stuff. You get to see my scent of the day and we just talk uh, a lot more on there. So yeah let's get into it. I put them in order of what I'm anticipating the most. And so the first one is actually the only one that's not from Perfume Online. It's one I picked up at Marshalls and it was only really because how good this deal was. This was $15.99 and it's Agent, uh, it's Agent Provocateur's Fatal Pink or Fatal Pink. I got the set which comes with the ultra rich body cream and then the fragrance. I'm just gonna pop it out here. And this one has yuzu, tangerine, whipped cream, pink lotus, camellia, datura, bamboo, musk, and saffron. And I had never really heard anything about this, but when I was looking it up, there was a substantial amount of people saying it was really good, fresh, and nothing like the fata Fatal Intense, or Fatal Intense, which I love from Agent Provocateur, the, it's it's in the red bottle. If you guys have been on my channel, you know I love that one. It seemed very different from that, but that it was interesting and fresher and a little more citrusy, obviously, with the yuzu and tangerine. But there were a bunch of people that were saying that it is an even more inexpensive version of light blue, and that was a deterrent because I'm not a light blue gal at all. I've never really liked that fragrance and I've never owned it, but for $15.99 I couldn't pass it up and I thought if it is a good dupe then I at least could let you guys know because I know a lot of people do like light blue by Dolce & Gabbana. So I'm going to do my best to try all of the fragrances on my skin because that's how I prefer and we have five today so let's see. This one again Fatal Pink or Fatal Pink. Oh wow it is very okay. From what I remember, it is quite similar to light blue. I'm really not familiar with any of their flankers, so maybe it's actually a lot more in tune with one of the flankers, but from what I remember, this is, it's definitely got light blue vibes. It's citrusy, it's fresh, it's tart. There was, there was something with light blue, and maybe it's been so many years that maybe if I tried it now, it wouldn't bother me as much. But at the time, A, it was incredibly popular. When it first came out and for so many years, I felt like that was all I was smelling and it just gave me nose exhaustion to no end. But there is a slight, from what I remember, soft, like slightly, very, very soft floral note to this. Whereas I remember light blue being a lot more of a tart um, more a slightly more astringent citrus. Don't get me wrong. There's definitely citrusy notes of like bergamot mandarin. I don't really get any whipped cream. I was intrigued by that note to see if it... I love when fragrances have whipped cream or sweet cream. At least in the opening, I'm not getting that at all. Definitely not getting any musk or saffron either, but yeah. For now, it seems like a very close dupe of light blue and something where I don't regret it since I don't own light blue and it's been very many years. So it seems like a slightly more wearable version, but that deal was just too good to pass up. Definitely check your Marshalls, Winners, and TJ Maxx because I feel like these huge, like the sets are going on even more sale lately near the holidays. All right, so the second one and the rest of them are all from Perfume Online. I always have my code for Perfume Online in the description box below, so definitely check that out. 
if you never order from them and you live in the United States or Canada, you can get a coupon. And this one, I was just intrigued by the bottle, the whole setup. I own nothing from this house, so it's the first from the house, which is always a favorite for me to do. And it was just intriguing. I was drawn in, admittedly, by the bottle, but this fragrance out of the whole set seemed like, or out of the ones that were available, seemed like more my up my alley. So this is by Zhivago. I think that's how you pronounce it. And the fragrance is white gold. And this one had white peony, lily of the valley, rosewood, white musk, and vanilla. And <clears throat> I read about this online, but here there's instructions as well. It says, with love and love for creation. And it's by Zhivago. And it's a tubeless pump, essentially. So apparently you're just supposed to tip it up and forward, up and down, and then you can spray and it so it doesn't have a tube, which is interesting. And I was just drawn in, why not? So there's a lot of authentication tabs and the bottle, which I'm trying to get out here, is very intricate and interesting. So this, I have to see, there it is. There is a base, which is all glass and it's quite heavy. And then it rests in here. And from what I could see, they all look like this. They're just obviously different colored juices and different fragrances. And I don't know if you guys can see on here, but there is no tube. And much like the Atelier des Arts, this has gold leaf inside, which was really interesting. So uh, we will try it together. I will spray it a little bit further up my arm. So apparently you're just supposed to tip like that and then spray and it does work. Ooh, okay. It's definitely reminding me of, let's see here. It's musky and soapy, very, it's uh, reminding me of Claire de Musk by Serge Luton. It has that kind of like French, chic French soap, milled soaps. Yeah, it definitely has a French milled soap, musky, um, clean scent. Slightly more vintage-y smelling. Yeah, like old French milled soaps. It's it's very, very similar to Claire de Musk, which I love. Um, so you have to be into that type of scent because I know clean scents are very hit and miss with a lot of people, but oh my God, I love them. And this is just very classic. It's a very, yeah, if you've ever smelled Claire de Musk, then you'll know the kind of fragrance that this is because they're quite similar. I'll have to compare them in the second impressions, but in from first impressions, it's very, very similar to that. And if you've ever smelled French milled soaps, even at like Marshall's Winners and all those stores, they have a lot of like in the soap section, just the original like cotton or clean musk scent. That's what it is. But I just love this bottle. It was so interesting. I love that it came with a base and that you don't need to purchase it. So it's not like Idol by Lancome, which drives me insane. And the gold leaf, I have to say, is an added touch because I don't think I saw that online when I was getting it. I was just intrigued by the pumpless bottle and the base. So that is White Gold by Zhivago. I'm so happy to have picked that up and I'm so happy to have it as part of my collection. All right, so the next one, there's definitely a story after, and I'm quite worried about this one. I'll be honest, not because it was expensive, but because I've had such bad experience with flankers in this range. So this is Pink Flower by Pink Sugar, and if you guys know me at all, you know I have loved and have long loved the original Pink Sugar by Aqualina. I have gone through multiple bottles. I layer it often and I just really rate that fragrance. It's incredibly well performing, beast mode, delicious, incredibly complimented by men. And I really, really liked it. And I've gone through multiple bottles, as I say, and own a backup. And the reality is because of that, I've picked up, I think two other flankers to this, Gold and Simply, and I've hated both of them. And because of that, I was so turned off to other flankers and yet always wanted to try them. And I know Pink Flower is always found at Marshall's 
and TJ Maxx in the States, but I've never found it. It's like not here at all. And I found it online for what, $12 or something. It's very, very inexpensive for the full 100 mil. So even though I've been burned before, I decided to give it a shot. And this one seems somewhat promising, but also worrying because I think it's more of a ship and I'm not the biggest fan of ship fragrances, but this has mandarin, orange, raspberry, black pepper, rose, jasmine, patchouli, and vanilla. So this is what it looks like. It's definitely more fancy than the others. It has a different cap, it has a ribbon, but the real test is the scent itself. And maybe I can come back one day, if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and show you all my pink sugar fragrances and kind of compare them. Okay, so straight off the bat, definitely a sheep. I feel like that stands out a lot to me. It has an element of um, Chloe's, what am I thinking of? The ship fragrance, Nomad. Nomad is definitely a ship too. And it's floral, it's a little tart. Does it have citrus? It does, it has mandarin and orange. It's a little like sweet citrusy. Yeah, it's a sweet citrus with some classic ship with patchouli. I don't do the best with ships because of that patchouli oak moss mix. Um, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes it can get just like dirty, sweaty smelling on me and I just struggle with it even though it might smell better to others. On me, I struggle with it. That is why I struggle with Nomad and I know it's a favorite, like favorite of Chloe for so many people. So I will play around with it. I will say out of the two other flankers, this is showing up as a better first impressions uh, to start off with, but it isn't, at least on first impressions, anywhere close to my beloved original pink sugar. So yeah, we will give it a try. I will, if you guys are interested, do a full video on the four like pink sugar range that I have. I have seen there's even a men's that I was gonna pick up and I thought I really be better not because if I'm having trouble, so much trouble with the women's, then I will probably have a bad experience with the men's as well. But for that one, we will come back and see what I think in a second impressions. And if you guys are interested, the video on the full range. And then the next fragrance, the fourth one, is the one I've tried before. It is so exciting to have this. This is a fragrance actually that I got in a tester bottle, which was extra exciting because it was less expensive. But the most exciting moment of it is that I had tried this Dior fragrance and the three or four others in the, I think it was called the Cruise Collection, whenever it came out in store. And I still remember the memory of being so enamored with the bottle, the design, obviously this like print that's always on the Dior bags and Dior's my favorite fashion house, not in terms of fragrance necessarily, but my favorite fashion house. And I just loved this entire range. And obviously they were full price and I never picked them up and I've always regretted and thought about that range. And when I saw this one, I just had to snag it up. So this is a huge citrusy fragrance and it's bergamot, lemon, pedigree, orange blossom. Juniper, almond, cypress, cedar, musk, galbanum, and caraway. And I have not smelled this in years, along with the others, obviously, from this cruise collection. But I just remember loving all of them. I don't even think I told you what it's called. It's called Escal a Portofino. Oh my god, I love this fragrance. It's definitely got like an eau de clone like a European Eau de Cologne 4711, not that it smells like that, but just like that citrusy, fresh, unisex vibe to it. But it's also got kind of a green, I don't know if it's the caraway or the galbanum, but it has like a touch of greenness to it, which usually would be slightly a deterrent, but in this case, it's not at all. Oh my God, I just love this. I cannot wait. It is such a classy, scent. It is a classy summer unisex scent that I feel like bo stunning bottle aside is totally my jam. It is just transporting me to 
European getaways and being by the seaside and I oh my god I just wish I could have the entire I think there's four fragrances in the cruise collection and I would want every single one of them from what I remember and just assuming this isn't gonna have the best lasting power by any means I think it's an eau de cologne or an eau de toilette but does it say here no uh, oh yes it says an eau de toilette yeah it's not gonna have great lasting power and it's a citrusy fragrance and I know that and I don't care because I love this fragrance and I'm so happy to have it as part of my collection so yeah that is Escala Portofino by Dior alrighty so now we get to the final one the one that has made me the most nervous I think second to Pink Flower this is definitely the one that's made me the most nervous because it was the most expensive and a blind buy and I really never thought I was gonna pick this one up but it went on sale and it was a really good sale too so I had to get it and that is I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess or just princess by Killian this is my first from Killian as well I've never smelled this or at least I don't recall I might have smelled these fragrances in Sephora a bunch of killing fragrances but I genuinely don't remember at all so for me it's gonna be a first impressions and this has lemon green tea ginger um, jasmine apple peach vanilla marshmallow benzoin and pedouin I think and this is what it looks like I just got the 50 mil I think yeah the 50 mil and a lot of people like this a lot of people absolutely adore this fragrance and I really hope this isn't a blind buy fail because it was expensive even with the sale and I just I don't know it, I had a gut feeling that this was a riskier one. Oh, okay it's interesting it's got like an element of um iced tea I feel like I, sm I smell iced tea I don't know if it's just the green tea and lemon ginger that's reminding me of that but it de it smells like a sweet iced tea not like sweet tea like southern sweet tea but a sweet iced tea I don't get sometimes red apple like with red delicious DKNY completely can turn my stomach I'm not getting that right now and I'm not getting a whole lot of jasmine at least not a strong one to my nose but it is kind of creamy and I don't know what that would be um, it says marshmallow in the base, but there is already like a touch of soft, maybe vanilla. Maybe it's that vanilla or marshmallow, but there is like a creaminess. It's not just tart, um, le like it's not a tart lemony iced tea. It kind of smells like a sweet iced tea that's slightly creamy. And more, I don't know, based on the notes, it's fine, but with a name like I don't need a prince to be by my side to be a princess I you you would imagine a lot sweeter sickly gourmand type fragrance but it's not that I actually really like it because I adore iced tea and I love tea fragrances and this is really really cool so I'm happy to have that it is smelling quite light so I will in my second impressions talk about lasting power and sillage on this because for right now I feel like it's sitting quite close to the skin but yeah based on first impressions it smells like a sweet green iced tea to me and a little bit of creaminess which I love so as always I like to put my fragrances in order and this is gonna be so so hard to do because I feel like ooh, this one is actually now as I'm smelling everything going back it's gonna be hard so I feel like some of it is biased because of my excitement I have to put Escala Portofino in number one this is just a dream to have all four would be an absolute dream so that I probably won't realize because these are really hard to find but to have even one this is a close no yeah it has to be it has to be in first place for me then who maybe I would say princess because it surprised me I was worried about this one and for now I'm intrigued I definitely want to wear it and give it some good wear test to see how I feel so that's in second place then I was going to put these two in equal to third place however I will say because this is reminding me so much of 
Claire de Musk, which I know and love. If I had to move one down to fourth, I would move this down only in my collection because I already have something that's similar. I'll have to try them. And this is really surprising me because in the opening, it was very light blue. And now it's softening up and getting more floral, which I'm into. So close third and fourth. And then I have to say, honestly, yeah, it it's getting better, I suppose, but Pink Flower uh, is in fifth place. I am going to try it. I do like it. I don't hate it by any means, but the others were just a lot more home runs than this one. It just, it's the chic. I'm working on it. I like to get myself into as many areas of fragrance as I can, so I can train my nose to like almost everything. And this is a good inexpensive way to do that with ships. So I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. As always, don't forget to comment below. Let me know which one of these fragrances you love, you have tried, you haven't tried, or you'd like to try. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye.